Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are going to take a look at how to time trial because that is what you need for the crossover competition and well we're going to take it from the basics but first I want to point out the tutorials will have you covered at least for the basics so I'm going to start off just briefly mentioning even the basics but then quickly go towards some more advanced uh, considerations that you should have while uh, doing time trials and of course event zero is already available and I have submitted my scores all right with that being said what we can do is uh, just practice a little um, well, first we have to switch switch away from this classic no we do want to do an ITT and let's say we make a flat one. Oh, that's that's a pretty little flat one I think it is a good idea to use the team that you are going to uh, use in the event as well, the crossover event team. So uh, yeah, let's just um, hop right in there and see what this is about. Race preview. There are some uh, AIs in this one as well. Um, please keep in mind that these are of varying skill. And this team will be uh, pretty much unbeatable. Telecom Ahana, known for just absolutely brute brutes of time trialists as you can see from the stats here for the time trial plus four plus two plus three he's just going to kill you all um so don't measure yourself against against vladimir vrolov because uh, that that won't end well you are supposed to get the um lowest amount of time lowest amount of turns with your gang here the first event counts all four riders but then keep an eye out for how many riders count in the end standing so let's uh, just jump into the race and let's talk about the basics as well as the more advanced stuff so first of all you see that um, on a turn one this is an individual time trial so there is way less to consider there it's quite a bit easier you only have to plan for a single rider at a time what do you see on the nodes that you the, these little fields here uh, we call them nodes is the number of free movement points that you are going to have on your next turn should you land on that one so if I land it here I get 11 free movement in the next turn if I land here I only get 10 if I land here I get 12 the little number underneath shows you the energy cost the little number there as you can see, we are going up one, two, three, four, five, up, and then we start using attack. That is because this rider has maximum energy per turn of nine, and then a maximum attack per turn of seven, which you see right there. All right. So, if we landed here on the next turn, we would get twelve free movement points. That is. Uh, probably one of the most important aspects to, to consider you want to land on good nodes each rider has an energy per turn an attack per turn has a pool of energy and a pool of attack points and while the pool of energy probably isn't that important in time trials unless they are extremely long which we do have a few in uh, in the challenge but what is vitally important is the pool of attack points and how it depletes. Your goal here should be that you spend your attack points such that towards the end of the race you have none left. If it is the last event in a tour or the only event, that means it's a classic, it's a single stage event, then you want to have spent all your attack points towards the end. All right? So, um, if you invest more points, you get further down the road. But always going max is not a good idea, as this move clearly shows. What is this about? There's this little red sector you see down there. This is this one right there. It is a medium technical section. Keep an eye out for um, technical sections and cobble sectors, which are diminishing the, the uh, trait bonuses you receive and that takes us to exactly that traits um, well let may, let's make a move first and then see what that is all about this one would be a really good move why well 
We are not going to go into the technical section. Um, and we have a bonus of plus three for all flat. All the cards here are flat, by the way. So this is making it very simple. But yes, this one is excellent. We get 12 movement points for the next turn and not 10. Um, and this is reasonably cheap. We have 25 available. Um, so plenty to spend and only using three. Let's move there. This will be quite different for the different riders. Well, Craig, uh, James Craig here is really good on the flat as well. And um, he can just follow there. They are not going to get any slipstream because this is an individual time trial. Now you see your um, soon to be favorite rider, Wolfgang Krüger. Yes, um, he sucks at riding on the flat. He's really, really good at climbing. But um, he's also really shit at technical sections. This doesn't bode well. He gets a total. This is the number he gets in total bonus for the section or penalty um, of minus four. He doesn't have any plus in flat. Doesn't have any plus in downhill. Only plus three in climbing and minus two for technical sections. Anyway, one very important thing to keep in mind is that while you're moving, if you make a maximum move where you use the maximum amount of attack per turn, you are going to lose a point of maximum attack per turn. So if we made this move with the six attack cost, then on the next turn, you would only be able to spend five points. If he then spends those five points on the next turn, the next turn thereafter, he would only be able to spend four points. So very much being ground down if you want to optimize your moves and it's a longer time trial than just like 65 nodes then be very wary of using your maximum attack per turn all right let's move him one short marco villano yep he also has some more potential and you see here he can't even make a move that costs him the maximum and that is because of the technical sector there I think we're going to talk about how this counts on the next move. So um, let's put him there. So what's going on here now? Well, we have a technical sector to contend with. And let's take a look at one number that is really quite helpful. Um, so we are making our move with Dimitri. He has a no bonus for technical but no penalties either he gets a plus three bonus for um, for flat riding this section is a flat section as you can see there flat zero percent but also it is a medium technical section and medium technical sections do get you a negative two penalty so what counts here well it is both a technical sector and a flat sector so it is three plus zero minus two which is the baseline so he gets a plus one in total. That means he gets on top of this free movement he gets, 12, uh, when he passes this one and there is no worse card. The, these sections here are called cards in the game because it was previously a board game based on cards uh, or that was the prototype at least. Um, the worst one of these that you traverse does count towards your total move. So if I um, just traversed from here to here, the worst node between my start and end point would be a trait plus three. So all good, I would get a plus three. In this case, if I move from here to here, well, I don't get the plus three. I do get the worst one that is along the way get the plus one all right so Dimitri um, you need to spend some uh, some energy and attack to get rolling you could argue here that oh well but Kirob look at that you're not supposed to go the maximum attack move because um, well then you on the next turn you have diminishing returns right but this is a situation where we on the next turn are going to cross the line and the um, crossing time is not in full turns but rather in in fractions of turns and if you cross from here 
to a node far beyond here, then every node you are closer to the finish before you cross it will mean that this ratio between total move time or total move distance and uh, distance before you actually cross the line will be favored towards going a little closer to the finish line here. So we are going to move a max move there and ooh, that is an even be better example. So let's take a look at his skills. Technical sector, he doesn't care. There's a plus two in there. Plus two, minus two is zero. So what does he get? Well, the plus two from the flat because it's a flat sector. It's a technical sector with a minus two. He has a plus two. Those cancel out, so he's left with a plus two. And these sections only have plus two by default. They're flats because he has a plus two. Okay, so that means he completely ignores this technical section. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, and that means that he actually can move there. So again, same argument for why we want to move here and not there. This is 11 points of free movement. This is 10 points of free movement. And we are sacrificing max attack. Hmm, okay. Well, this is still beneficial to you in terms of gaining some time. If you, on the other hand, need to save attack points for the next stage, for instance, then you can consider to move there. All right, let's move here and try to grab the best possible time. And now, uh, Marco Villano. Interesting case here. He's struggling across the technical sector, but um, he does have a plus one. So this one results in a minus one. Of course, we have a negative two penalty from the tech sector. And technical, which I maybe should explain for you non-cyclists. A technical sector would be one with very sharp, dangerous corners or um, like a little blind turns and whatnot, or narrow roads and so on. So it's a little bit more difficult to navigate, especially on a time trial bike, which are not the most agile of uh, vehicles. Um, yes. So in this case, we have an interesting decision to make for his future, um, because he's going to run out of attack points on this uh, next move after the one that we are making. Does this matter in this situation? No, it doesn't, because this is the final race. We want to go as close to the finish as possible. Him uh, reducing his maximum attack per turn doesn't matter in this case. So, yeah, we don't care. Um, let's move him as far as possible. Now Wolfgang. Yeah, same thing here. He does have plenty of uh, attack points to spend. He's really slow across the technical sector, which you can see here. Also very important to note, we see this beautifully here. This is recovery. You probably won't be seeing that much or not using that at all in time trials. That is, <laughs> you don't have time for this. This is moving too slowly. But what you see here is like five, five, and then two. And that is because he gets this massive penalty moving into the sector. And this very nicely illustrates the moves of ru uh, the, the rules of movement. If he starts from here and moves to here, well, there's two nodes, and the worst node in between is a zero trait. If he moves from here to here, well, what is the worst node in between those two nodes? Well, it's these two, and these two both have a zero. Okay, cool. What if he moves to here? Well, what is the worst node then? The worst node then is this one, which belongs to this card, and it has a minus four penalty. That is why you see this jump between the five and the two. So this landing here is atrocious. Well, landing here would be fine, but landing there, of course, would be much better because you get more free, free movement. But we're, that that is not in question right now. Um, we do want to land there though. And can we finish on the next turn or not? We can. Okay, that means to me that we actually should be going there, sacrificing a little bit of the max movement. Because when you see here, and you take a look here, for the finish time, if you imagine it as a ratio, we are going to move, if we m move from here, to there, 
This is four nodes after the finish. And we have a whole lot of nodes before the finish. If we move to here, we can also move four nodes after to after the finish. But we have one node less traveled before the finish. Which means your finish time will be lower. Alright? So that makes sense. Um, yes. So we move there. We lose one maximum attack. But that doesn't matter. And of course, Vladimir Vrolov takes it. Convincingly. Not a chance against him. Oh, no, James Craig came... Ah, Tim Hartman. Of course, Tim Hartman. Uh, let's let's take a look. He's, he is killer. Ah, oh, no, here. Uh, Tim, where are you? There. Plus four in flat. Kind of helps. With Dimitri, we're just moving full bore across the line. And... Oh, it's paused. Um... And what more do we need to consider? Let's see. Nothing. It's all just move as hard as you can. Marco Villano coming across the line. And now the only one struggling left is Wolfgang, of course. But we did shave a little bit time off by making a smart move of going the maximum distance here instead of being slightly conservative. All right. Um, every little bit counts. That was a good result. Now... I would suggest that we take a look at something a little bit more complex. First, a um, maybe a, a little time trial, individual time trial with some different terrain types. Just to uh, re refresh your memory on the movement rules and the cards. Uh, let's make a hilly ITT. Oh, oh that, this one is, is harsh. There's a lot to think about in this one. All right, let's... Let's go for it. Um, we do have a random... Uh, no, not a random team. This is the standard predefined team. Uh, let's uh, take a look at this one. Yes. Okay. Yes. Here, first of all, you see that there is a um, pretty nasty technical sector right there. A rough technical section. That one does kill you really hard, as you see there. Um... Hmm. So this guy is just going worse by four points right there. But we don't have much of a choice uh, than to move there. On a longer time trial, you on a very long time trial, you might want to consider to move such a short move. But then on the next turn, you will have to have this section instead. So it doesn't really help you. Can move across there. And this is the very last node that has the downhill on it. Let's talk about that real quick. So, when you are make, trying to make a jump across bad terrain, you want to take along the uh, movement from the last node before the bad terrain, if that node value is higher, that movement value is higher. If it were reversed, that this was a terrible section in terms of free movement, like not 13, but let's say 2, no, of course, then you wouldn't have this penalty. But uh, let's let's think about it in terms of there being this penalty then. And here was the 13. Well, of course, you would want to land in on this one instead, like after. But in this case, sometimes rough technical sections, um, especially like the downhill ones, can be the perfect end landing spots for you because they give the most free movement. And on the next turn, you're not traversing any nodes from this card which has the sucky uh, modifier to it. So you have cleared the technical section, but you're taking out the momentum from it. Oh, cool. And that makes it a perfect move in this scenario. Oh, shit. Okay, now let me show you what you should never do if you can avoid it. All right. This is atrocious. We are going from 2, not to 3, but to 8. And we can't get to this spot. That is because Dario here is a, a climber, just like Wolfgang was. And uh, this is not looking good for him. Let's make a move that is absolutely atrocious. Landing in the middle of one of these sectors. Because if you land there, not only are you going to pay the price for this sector now but also on the next move. So in that case, what else can you do? Well, not much. 
Um, kind of land here. S spare you some energy unless you can manage to get to the finish uh, by landing there like really re quick. But this is a reasonably long time try. Uh, let's land short there. And he can go all the way. That's nice. Wow. They're even jumping towards the mountain there. That is probably Vladimir Volov again. Yeah, yep, of course it is. So here we have a mixed bag. We do have mountain terrain. We don't have downhill terrain because we are on the last node of the downhill. There's no node between our start and end point that would be a downhill node. So the downhill trait doesn't count. We do have mountain though, so the mountain trait will count. Zero. And then we have flat plus two. Well, flat plus two and technical. Medium technical section is a minus two. Uh, mild is minus one, medium is minus two, rough is minus three, and uh, terrifying is minus four. Um, so minus two from this one, but we have a plus two uh, from the flat, which nets out to zero. On the mountain, we have a zero to start with and no penalties, because this is just normal mountain terrain. That means zero for this terrain, zero for this terrain, and then, well, z zero for this ag again, and here also zero. And with the finish being there, can we finish up if we landed here? No is the answer. If we land here, uh, we could la go all the way to there. Let's see if that would be better. This is the preview function, by the way. Very handy. Um, if we landed instead here, we could go all the way to there and we have 16 attack points left. If we land there and then move across the line, we will certainly get a better result than landing here or there and then going across the, uh, the line because of the ratio, once again. So I think that would be the move. We go here, we have 12 points remaining and that will be pretty much perfect. Alejandro is going uh, to do the same thing here. Um, let's take a look at his bonuses. So for the flat section, that is really screwing him up because of the technical stuff here. He, g he has a zero in flat, but this one is a technical sector, so minus two. He gets a penalty overall of minus two, so the plus one in the mountains doesn't help him whatsoever in this move. But if we land here, or indeed we land here, the next move for him will be entirely composed of mountain and there are no technical sectors in this mountain terrain. And that means he gets his plus one bonus. So uh, if we landed here, on the other hand, on this one, there would be one flat node and a technical, <laughs> and this technical is flat node section, um, that would uh, like stop him in his tracks, really. So uh, yes, you could move either here or there, but with him having um, so much attack points left, we do want to go as far as we can without diminishing his max movement. Can he go? He can actually go across the line. You know what that means. Probably want to spend the maximum instead. Because that means we can move equally long on the next turn. Losing one attack per turn. Um, this value going down to seven. But that means that we still get a lower ratio. So, moving there, max attack. Oh man, Dario. Oh, this is this is not a time trial for him. Um yeah. The sector is not great, is it? But he's already in a terrible sector there, so it doesn't really matter. This one is the worst one, minus 5. So going into this minus 4 sector is not hindering him whatsoever. He has already been punished and he will be punished twice because <laughs> Oh, oh shit! He has to. How many? How many moves with tech sectors, sectors will he have made? One to there, and one from there to there, and then one out of there. So three for two tech sectors. That is awful. Little Valentin also doesn't have much fun because of the varied terrain. He doesn't find his his proper flow, and his plus three to flat doesn't help him. Too much mountain in a way. He can land here, then take the uh, tech sector next time. All right, and we move across the line with 
Uh, Alejandro there. And uh, now comes our puncher, wasn't it? No. Ah, this guy. Yeah, we want to move as far as possible. He has plenty of attack points left then. That will give us the lowest ratio. Um, landing there, yes, that makes a speed difference for the next move. But in terms of finish ratio, that move to there, into the worst terrain, is actually better. So, Dario, how are you doing? I, I guess that's a not too well. Um, here, same thing again. This is actually perfect, because um, he only has nine attack points left. Five plus four is nine. If he moves at the maximum, the next turn it's getting reduced to four, which then is his maximum, so he can spend all his attack. But we know these moves have been absolutely atrocious for him. So, um, yes, he moves there. And this is an instance where you should definitely not move into this terrain. Because, um, let me see. No, he can finish. He can finish just about. Let's see if he can finish from here. Yes. That means that actually this move here is superior to this one. Despite the terrain being awful. Again, finish time ratio. So, let's move there. And who won? Ha! Ha! Who would have guessed? And there goes the last turn. Alright, this was a complicated one. This was actually a pretty difficult one. So, um, yeah, they uh, did a mediocre job. <clears throat> oh, it was apart from the deliberate awfulness of uh, Dario Schubert. Um, this was pretty much optimally played, I would think. So, uh, race summary, here we go, and back to main menu. Now, let's talk about team time trials very quick. Because that adds a whole new dimension to it. They're called TTTs. And let's do a hilly one. Oh, yes, I like it. It has a little bit of everything. But no technical sector, so let's regenerate. Um, oh, this is interesting. Yes, I think we are going to tackle this one. That's a good uh, that should give us plenty of opportunity to to take a look at the mechanics of the TTT. So, um, yes, start the race. Oh no, it's Telekomahana again. In the TTT, the first thing that happens is turn zero. You are asked to order your team in the way that you like. So in the TTT, the thing that is different from what we've seen previously is that it is all about team riding and thus about slipstream. The rider who rides at the front, right there in this position, is the one in the wind. He is going to spend the, the full amount of energy to move that distance. The other riders behind him are going to benefit from his slipstream. So just in general, what you would want to do here is to take your strongest rider for the terrain that you're going to cross and put him at the front. That means he can pull the furthest, but also he's going to use the least amount of energy and attack points in order to do so. Well, or, well, if he moves shorter, then he's not using as much as the others would. So, um, and, or he can move further. That is also a, a, very, um, a very good move then. So uh, let's take a look. We have Hans Fischer. Mm -hmm. Hans is looking mighty strong. We're starting on a flat 2% section, which gives you, this has become um, very important information now, this sector gives you a minus 1 to slipstream. The maximum amount of slipstream you can have from this section is 6. The worst modifier along the route does count, also for the slipstream. Alright, so we put, um, not this rider, no, not this rider, not this rider, this rider we put right at the front. Here's the plus three in flat and is generally pretty strong. So there we go. And now we can move. Now, what you will see is something that is extremely useful and should be utilized at all times if you, if you can. And that is the resource preview. What this panel shows is how many resources are going to be spent by your teammates if they follow this move. So you won't be seeing the currently moving riders energy and attack use there because we know about that, that's five. 
So we can look here instead and see that, okay, the riders that are riding behind are getting free, free movement from the slipstream. And they are going to use five, three, and five energy. If we want, want to move a little high up there, uh, it's seven, five, seven, okay. And we're getting four slipstream because now we're moving faster, we generate more slipstream. Let's see where this goes over to five, there, from four to five. So that's even better. The riders behind them spend eight, six, eight, eight, six, eight. There is no extra cost for the riders behind because they get the extra slipstream. Do we get up to six? Remember, six is the maximum we can get from going over the sector. So we have five, six. This is the optimal move, not only because of the slipstream, but also because this is one lower than his maximum attack. Perfect. Let's go with this. As you can see, the other riders here, including Oliver Schubert, who is our climber guy, who uh, is very, very questionable on the flat, uh, in time trials at least, he is um, struggling to move even that far. But in the slipstream, he has no problems. Spending one attack point, but no, nah, no problem. The others are not even, some part, part of them, not even spending attack. After each turn, you get to reposition your riders again. And then you need to think about what is coming up. Oh, well, preferably you have done so from the turn before. Because you need to prepare more than one turn ahead. Um, but yes, this is a completely flat move until we hit the mountain. The mountain is still too far away, though. It doesn't look like we are going to get there in one turn. That would be a massive move. We have 10 free movement, and then even if Hans is pulling all he can, this would get us um, plus 17, so 27 nodes down the road. This here, the flat, uh, the last flat node is 26. So now I'm, um, I'm questioning what would be the best move here. This would be good in terms of him not losing max attack and so on, but. Also, he is going to have some problems getting over this mountain if we just use all his attack points here. Jaroslav Gusev, though, is not quite able to get there. And also the question is, do we actually need to get there? Because for the next move, this here, from here to here, would be way short. But moving from here into the climb, maybe to there, yeah, I guess that would allow us to maybe go all the way to there if we have enough attack points left. But I think what I'm going to try... Oh, this is this seems like too long a jump. Going f Can we go from here all the way to there? <laughs> no, no we can't. Uh, that would require a plus 21. And we have... Uh, 8 plus 6, that is plus 14. Um, and our climber has a plus 3 on top of that, so 17. Let's say, where, where is he? Our climber guy. Um, 9, 5, 3. So, yes, that is 14 plus 3, 17. We n would need a 20 plus 21 in order to get there with the 11 free movement that we have from this node. So, a one jump. A one turn jump is not possible. That means we want to find a decent landing spot. And this landing spot there is looking pretty decent. Which probably means that we can use Yaroslav here and uh, just let him do one pull. And after that we can use Antonio because he is proper fast. It looks like the AI teams are thinking a little similar there. They are all landing on this node, but we are going to slow down slightly. I think we could aim for... no. This is a situation where landing here doesn't doesn't quite compute that well. Because here you get 6 free movement, here you get 11. The distance between these nodes is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so in practice it is exactly equal to landing there. But on this one, you spend way less energy to get there. This would, of course, again, be different if uh, it is about crossing a line. 
but we are not crossing a line here. We're trying to conquer the mountain. So what I can do is just save some energy. Let's put all the riders in there. That's a good node to land on. And I think he can do another pull. Yeah, doesn't matter. We're just going to land there anyway. Some of these teams have made significant moves up the hill. And of course, Telekom Ahana is among them. We're just going to save our resources and land right there. Maybe we can um, spend some more throughout this technical sector that is coming up, which also is reducing slipstream by a lot. Minus two um, penalty there, while the other sectors around it have a plus three in terms of slipstream. If you get into a sector that only consists of downhill nodes without any technical stuff, you are getting insane slipstream values. So we already talked about it. We're landing a little short and take the team with us. Now, climber guy, I think it is your time to shine. Let's uh, take you to the front. Plop, there you go. And now you can show off what you can do or not. Of course, there is way less slipstream across the climb. But we are uh, going pretty fast regardless. So we should see... Oh, well, there's a minus four in there. Yeah, with a minus four, this is going to be a little rough. Huh, the tides have turned, says uh, Oliver Schubert. Because now he's only using eight, uh, eight energy, while the others are using attack points to get there. We are landing on this last spot. Uh, that is quite efficient and on the next turn we can move uh, all the way to well we shall see There's some juicy downhill terrain up ahead and can we finish from from here I think the answer is yes even though there is a uh, medium technical section here yeah let's let's just have a pull and there, there will be mountain and downhill um, if we go all the way to there which uh, I think will be the optimal move. Uh, should be possible. Yeah, even with zero bonus. All right, and now let's make the move. Oh, look who won. Who would have thought? <laughs> yep, we can't even move into the sector properly. We have a maximum of five attack, but the maximum we see here is two. So that's exactly the move we are going to make here. And the others are using some attack points. Uh, it's the um, advantage climber. And now I'm going to show you... Well, first of all, let's let's take a look at who, who should be leading. Uh, he has a plus one in down here. Is this the highest we have on the team? He has a plus one in down here, yes. And no technical. He has negative two, negative two. No. Okay, so this this guy is the best one. So let's just switch around and have him go hard. And also always take a look at the energy per turn, but everyone is a little dead at the moment. Although not... No, actually not. Antonio is doing a lot better. Let's take Antonio and move him to the front. He can nuke this. Yes, he can nuke it. And now let's see what happens here. Oh, everyone can follow. Okay, uh, that destroys my example a little bit. But I'm going to show it off anyway. And that is what counts in a team time trial. The rider that comes across the line in third place of your team is the one that counts. Not the one in first or second or fourth, but the one in third. So let's say... Your rider comes across there, across there, and then you ran out of juice. And um, you have a straggling rider there and there. All right? That, that is not good. You haven't been planning well. But now um, we can take a look at what happens then. So we had a finish time of... Uh, where, where is it? Oh, here they are. 581. All right, 581. He's going max across the line. And he's going max across the line. All right, let's take a look at the final standings. 581 would be plus 0.9. What do we get? Uh, we get plus uh, 1.19. Because that is the time that Antonio Ferraro... No, 
so, someone else who was someone else who moved to, he, he moved first but everyone gets to set to the same time apart from the last guy who gets an even worse time this is something that you will during this challenge during these events use to your advantage and well also that will be to your detriment if you don't watch out for it and I think this has been a pretty thorough walkthrough of, uh, of uh, time trials and team time trials with lots of considerations uh, lots of things to keep in mind while playing and um, yes it I always forget how how complicated it actually is. Um, having played over a thousand hours certainly helps, um, but you're not going to manage that before you have to do the submissions. It is physically not possible. So my recommendation to you is, if you want to perform well, for every turn, you, you take it slow, you um, consider all your options, and you try to think about these things like terrain, rider speed, and resources. And that should get you most of the way there and uh, get you some good performance. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little walkthrough and uh, good luck and skill. Um, I wish you for the challenge. All right, see you there. <laughs>